Hey there my fellow intellectuals, today we're going to show that the shortest path between two points in a plane is a straight line, but we're going to use the Euler-Lagrange equation to show it. So for those of us who've taken basic geometry, we've been told that the shortest distance between two points in a plane, a Euclidean plane that is, is just a straight line. So if you have points one and two, the shortest distance between them is just a straight line like that. But how do we actually prove that? Well, the Euler-Lagrange equation gives us a method to, to just you know verify that ourselves. So what we're going to do here is we have to find a way to represent this function f in terms of all of the variables down here. Now what is f essentially? The f that we're trying to find is the f that minimizes the length between these two points. So what is the f that describes that? Well f is going to be a function that describes the uh, arc length essentially. So f is going to be like an arc length. And we're going to show that the f that minimizes the arc length between these two points is going to be a straight line. I keep, I keep drawing that but that's essentially what we're going to show. So one way to think about this is that imagine we look at this curve and here is maybe not there but maybe um, Maybe, I think here would be better actually. Here's a little ds here. So that's an infinitesimal arc length element, that ds that I have just drawn in white there. And the way we're gonna calculate the total length of the curve is just integrating all of the differential arc lengths from points one to two. Now remember from calculus, if we zoom in close, right? If we just zoom in to this uh, infinitesimal ds, we can break it up into components. We can break it up into essentially straight components because in calculus, if things look curved, we can actually just zoom in using the power of calculus thanks to Isaac Newton that we can just zoom in to you know curves and we can find tangent lines to those curves. We can find points where, uh, you know, that's the whole idea of derivatives essentially. So. That's, that's why I'm essentially making a triangle out of this. I'm, I'm zooming in infinitesimally where I can approximate ds as a linear segment. So this uh, leg would be dy and this bottom part is dx. And if we go, so if we go, you know, infinitesimally small, we can show that ds, right, just using the Pythagorean theorem, so that's a really bad right triangle. In fact, it's so bad that I wanna draw another one. So let's see, that comes out a little better. That is slightly better. So we have ds, we have dy, we have dx. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can show that ds is just equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. So let's just replace that here. So we'll replace ds with the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Okay, so we're almost there. We're going to manipulate this a little bit more to get to applying the Euler-Lagrange equation, which I've written above here. This is going to become our f that we, that we plug into the Euler-Lagrange equation, but we can't quite do that yet because it's not in terms of x and y, or not yet at least, it's in terms of the differentials. So how are we going to change that? Well, one way to do that is take dx squared plus dy squared, and now let's just go ahead and factor out a dx squared from both terms. So we'll have one plus the quantity dy dx squared. We factor out the dx squared as just a dx on the outside. So we'll have one plus dy dx squared. So our total length now can be written as if we go between points, let's say x1 and x2 on the uh, x-axis, we'll have the integral from x1 to x2. We have dx, we have the integral of one plus dy by dx squared. And now finally, this is the f we're going to use to, uh, to, to put into the Euler-Lagrange equation. This is just the arc length formula, the differential arc length formula uh, formulated in terms of the derivative of y with respect to x. That's what dy dx is. So 
what we're going to do now is we're going to stick that into the Euler Lagrange equation. So we're going to say F, write this as uh, 1 plus dy dx uh, quantity squared, and this is all to the 1 half. Furthermore, we can rewrite this as 1 plus y prime of x squared to the 1 half, just to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. So remember the Euler Lagrange equation goes something like df by dx minus, I just want to make sure I get it right here. Sorry, it's df by dy. See, I was about to mess that up. df by dy minus df by, uh, so, sorry, d by dx. Wow, I'm really not remembering it well. It's d by dx by uh, df by dy prime. Okay, and so this equals zero. Okay, and now we just have to plug in all these derivatives. So the first one's pretty easy. If you notice in the uh, f function, there is actually no, uh, no, there's no y in it. There's just a y prime of x. So this first term right there is just zero, right? Because there is no, there's no y. This is a function of just y prime right there. So it's just y prime of x. So in that case, that's pretty easy. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. So what that leaves us with is just minus d, d by dx df by dy prime is equal to zero. Now what does this tell us? This tells us that df by dy prime must equal some constant. And why do we know that? We know that because if you take the derivative of something with respect to x and you get zero, then the thing you're taking the derivative of, remember the derivative measures the rate of change. This means that df by dy prime, as a, you know, as with respect to x, it doesn't change. So we're gonna say it's equal to constant with respect to x. Okay, so that helps us out a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, let's say we call this thing, I don't know, m. I'll just call it a constant m here. All right, and um, we have to take the derivative of df by dy prime, so let's go ahead and take d by dy prime. Sorry, my d's look like twos, I know. Uh, one plus y prime of x quantity squared to the one half, so let's try and be careful here. It's not necessarily the easiest derivative to take, so we'll have uh, one half, we'll have one plus y prime of x quantity uh, squared to the minus one half, and then we have to multiply this by two y prime of x because of the chain rule. So the two and the one half, sorry, that's the one half, and the two will cancel. So this leads us leaves us with df by dy prime. That equals, uh, we have y prime of x, and then we, because we have this minus uh, one half uh, term there, that just becomes a positive one half in the denominator, so I'll have y prime of x over one, plus y prime of x quantity squared to the one half. Okay, so far so good. Now all we have to do is we have to set this to a the constant we defined earlier. And now we're going to go ahead and try and solve for uh, y prime of x. So here we go. This is going to be a little bit of a tedious process, but we're, we'll get through it regardless. So what we're gonna do here is, uh, let's multiply both sides by the denominator. So we'll have y prime of x is equal to m. Um, let me see, is that a smart idea? Actually, hmm. I'm just thinking here. I don't know if that's really the smartest idea, but we can go ahead and try it anyway. We'll have one plus y prime x quantity squared to the one half. Okay, here. Um, I'm gonna square both sides now, so I'll have y prime x quantity squared is equal to m squared one plus y prime of x 
uh, quantity squared, but this is now just for the one power, so that's okay. And uh, I'm going to, uh, let's see here. I guess I could distribute this, right? So let's just distribute that m squared to both terms. So we have equals to m squared plus m squared y prime of x quantity squared. And then we can subtract uh, this y prime of x squared on both sides. All right, so let's do that. So we can just uh, take y prime of x quantity squared minus m squared y prime of x quantity squared is equal to m squared. So I'm sorry if this is not the most efficient algebra I know. I may have not taken the, the path of least resistance, but we'll, we'll get there regardless. Uh, and we can factor out a y prime of x squared here. And we'll have 1 minus m squared, right? Okay, so we have 1 minus m squared. And then we'll have this is equal to m squared. And then we will have, um, uh, we can divide actually both sides by 1 minus m squared. So we have m squared divided by 1 minus m squared. And finally, we can get y prime of x is equal to the square root of this thing. It's equal to the square root of m squared divided by 1 minus m squared. Okay, that's fine with me. Remember that m is just a constant. It's just a constant. So we can say that m squared over 1 minus m squared is also a constant. And I think I'm going to redefine this whole thing. I'm just going to call it m prime, little m prime, just to signify uh, it's a different variable. And so I don't have to keep rewriting that square root m squared 1 over minus m squared business. So one helpful thing to do now is rewrite y prime of x as dy dx. It's the derivative of y with respect to x, which is equal to m prime. And then we can do separation of variables. We can multiply both sides by dx here. And then we can integrate this, right? So we can integrate dy is equal to the integral of m prime dx. And so we'll get that y as a function of x is equal to m prime of x. But then we need to add a constant of in integration there. And um, I'm gonna make this a real nice prime. And for this constant, I'm just gonna call it b for no reason whatsoever that hopefully you can tell. <laughs> but um, if you look at this, right, here's a y of x and it's equal to m prime x plus b. This is just, you know, an equation of a line. This is an equation of a line. And so we've just shown that the function f, right, the, the thing that satisfies the, um, the Euler-Lagrange equation, right, that, that's showing the distance between, the shortest distance between two points in a plane was the thing we assumed all along. It was a straight line. So that was a very, very involved process to show that, indeed, a, a straight line is the thing that will satisfy you know, the shortest distance requirement with the Euler-Lagrange equation. But nonetheless, we went through the algebra, we showed it, and it is done. It's beautiful. And I hope you enjoyed this application of the calculus of variations. So thank you for watching and tune in next time for more physics and math videos.